everyone and welcome back to episode club today we are going to be talking season six episode 10 the winds of winter we're going again with a little bit of a backtrack but that's okay and joining me today uh usually for the live streams but today is going to be a podcast is mr john saint baptiste how are you doing today i'm doing well thank you for asking mackenzie um I'm quite excited about talking about this episode. Um, I, the, the, there are some great moments in this episode. And what I think, yeah, I, I, I think that season six had a number of flaws, but I think the moments that they got great were great. Mm-hmm. And this episode has quite a few of those moments. Scene is pretty much the most recognizable from this episode and it's the preparations before the big explosion and then the big explosion so we see Cersei, Tommen and uh, Marjorie as well as the High Sparrow all getting ready and Cersei's trial so it's a long uh, sequence about 20 minutes long so how'd you think about it? Um you know, we, we, we had talked a bit earlier. I, I, the reason I love this episode so much is because even though the second half is kind of dull, for lack of a better term, the first half of this episode is so powerful. Uh, the music, the music's brilliant. Um, and the way that it's shot the way the scene's done is just absolutely phenomenal. You know, I, I, I took, um, sorry, I'm shamelessly self plugging here on my channel. I'm doing game of Thrones episode by episode or episode by track. And I put, uh, putting out the fire with gasoline by David Bowie. Which I I think is so apt on, on so many levels, but uh, yeah, it it, it, it you because you know something's gonna happen when you're first watching it, and you know myself as a book reader, like there's a certain point where everything stops. Mm-hmm. Like my a- actual knowledge of what is going to happen stop so anything that's happened essentially after season six started Mm -hmm. is kind of new to me um and i i i don't want to go so far as to say like condescending manner (laughs) It, it because i do think when you go from one medium to another you have to change a few things Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, the, the scene starts out and it, like, I had no idea what was going to happen. Mm-hmm. It just builds and builds and builds. It's like, like the way it's shot, the music, everything you've got. And then you've got Lancel with his little star on his forehead, you know, Crawling in the dark, you've got Kyburn with his little mutant children crawling around. It, it, it uh, yeah, it, it, oh, it's, it, it's I, I, I mean, I, this phrase does not come out of my mouth often, and you know how much I love the shows we talk about. Like, I always give things better ratings than anybody. This first scene is cinematic brilliance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you get you get a lot in this <laughs> just about twenty two minutes. You get a lot of King's Landing, obviously because we didn't get um, King's Landing in the previous episode, um, which you have, if you haven't, please check that out. It was so much fun, um, a lot of laughs and a lot of tangents uh, went on with that. But yeah. You get um, you get callbacks to this kind of with in episode eight when Cersei asks how much wildfire they have under the city, 
and Tom, uh, Tom Kyburn says more, much more. Um, so than she is expecting, and yeah, everybody else is just getting ready for the trial. Like nothing's gonna happen. Tommen's obviously separated. Um, Marjorie is with the dope fa- <laughs> her father, and they're doing Lancel's trial, but obviously this doesn't go to plan. But Marjorie's the only person to pick up why Cersei's not there, and there's a specific reason why she's not there. And the High Sparrow's like, whatever, she's gonna be uh, getting in trouble regardless again, so it doesn't matter to me. Um, but yeah, the blowing up of the Sept and all of this n- craziness that happens is just oh damn it yeah john what do you feel about how like almost all the tyrells being swiped out in like a split second dude you guys are messing with my family and you're messing with my girl like don't mess with my natalie and don't mess with my family i already didn't really care for cersei but this kind of pushed me over the edge yeah. You know, um, it, no, but it, it, it was brilliant. It was it was brilliantly done. It was brilliantly shot. Um, and like you said, there's there's no uh, almost no dialogue. Mm-hmm. It, it's really uh, a, a, every good writer who talks about how to write says show don't tell, mm-hmm. and. Yeah, the the way these scenes are done are great, um, but yeah. Oh, you, you take out the Tyrells, you take out my peeps. Yeah, Cersei, you're on my hit list. <laughs> yeah, and I think actually, and same thing with Pycelle. Well, we know that in the I remember, is it in the book and at the end of Dance that he's killed, or is this not happened yet? Uh, by the end of dance. Oh, bugger. I'm pretty sure, because... I think, because I, think I know they... If I remember correctly, um, now I, I'm going to make a confession, actually dance is my least favorite of the five books. <laughs> so I've only read it like four times. Instead of like the eight other times. I've read Feast for Crows like 12. Oh, well, there you go. So there you go. Um, Four times plus another eight. It's 12. Uh, I, I've read the other ones, yeah, about eight. I think Dance, I've read like four. I, if I remember correctly, and please somebody correct me if I'm wrong, um, I think it's alluded to, but I don't think it's directly said. He's just a dirty gray rat. Who cares? Yeah. And he's killed by a bunch of little uh, birds. Uh, so the the lady of the evening that was in his scene before is not getting paid um, for her work. So dirty old the man. I shouldn't kick Tyrion out. He always he even paid for myself. Yeah. You know? just, just the dirty old man. But Kyburn. It now has full control, pretty much, of the Red Keep. Ain't no Grandmaster Pycelle uh, in his way. Uh, What's your take on Kyber? Do you think he's loyal to Cersei? Do you think Cersei is just a means to an end for him? uh, It'd be hard to say if he would just switch sides all of a sudden. Um... I'm not talking necessarily about switching sides, but do you think he's actually loyal to her, or is she just a means to an end? He did save Jamie um, and like he'll like get his hand to be okay um, again, and she's like kind of in his debt for that, um, and also she. <laughs> got equipped with the zombie mountain so I feel like because 
she gives him the ability to kind of devil in the dark the stuff that he kind of got in trouble with the citadel about uh, kind of in the open not necessarily in the open but he gets to kind of more more of a means to an end like yeah. if, if somebody else gave him the same opportunity do you think like he, yes there was somebody else who held the same position like probably would be the same thing nuts. yeah like who held like the same position um but wasn't her probably would do the same thing but now kind of because that relationship has established been established i don't think he would um like in the very beginning yeah sure but now that they've kind of established a relationship of sorts i don't think he would try to abandon her unless presented maybe with ulterior motives like in the books, Cersei is bad shit. Mm-hmm. Like, sorry, am I allowed to say that on your channel? I I watch the other words that come out. <laughs> no, no, don't worry about that. <laughs> but it, it, in the books, she's like, like, like she's nuts. I like that this shows a point where you kind of see where she's going in that direction. Like, how did she not see that Tom would kill himself? Uh, like, like, or, or, or at least be extremely distraught about his wife being killed, let, let alone all the other crazy stuff that goes on in this scene. Because he wasn't the thing too is because he was kept there it could have been also his psychological mindset that also his mother was killed uh no i'm saying how did she not see it yeah uh, it's like the val not the val it's the golden shrouds golden golden crown and golden shrouds thing like pretty much since the moment marcella died she probably viewed tom and as a ticking time bomb um, in a sense, and obviously she didn't uh, believe that her, uh, like, that that would be the way that he would die. Maybe, because every her other two died from poisoning, so maybe she thought Tommy would maybe poison himself, or have somebody poison him, but yeah, you would have thought that you would have had somebody watch the window but or, or maybe like hey hang out with him <laughs> oh, sorry the church is burning down and your wife just died but you know let's talk about this and yeah, she kind of let yeah she just because it's in the, the next episode in one a 701 where he's like jamie's like talking about it and She's like, yeah, well, he died, so it doesn't really matter anymore. It's like, because, yeah. Yeah. You would think she'd have more of a... Yeah. Granted, I'm a parent of a single child, but I I, I can't think of just, like, sacrificing your child like that. Like, like, so to me, that it it really shows that she's just like she's going nuts mm-hmm. and i like that because it's it it, it reflects her in the show mm-hmm. um and pretty much the high sparrow is just like Ooh, i don't know well marjorie is basically like, let's go um and then obviously the explosion happens and i can only imagine the uh special effects people and how they uh had to strategically think about how something like that would explode. Um, yeah, you gotta think you've gotta show up like what a workshop. Mm-hmm. You've gotta show up like all these people who put up all these insane special effects. Mm-hmm. And, and, and you have to be like, oh yeah, well, look what I did. 
all just visual effects work, but the fact that it's just like blown up and it's doing the one thing um, that the Mad King didn't get to do and she gets to do it, it's just like there's there's something there's something to the fact that she blew up <laughs> the sept A probably also to kill the high sparrow and kill all religious connotations, but B to get to have a lot of minor characters get like kind of swept under the rug and we don't get to deal with them anymore. So it's in the sense of A foreshadowing, B moving the plot forward, but C also trimming the fat, the beginning of the process of uh, trimming a lot of uh, the fat in other areas. Um, now, you and I were talking, I think this is personally the best final episode. Mm -hmm. Just because of the first 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. The rest of it, I think, is kind of filler. Ex except for that Lovely little note at the end. Yeah. But, uh... Well, the you... note at the end is just Danny flying off into the sunset, or right, uh, sailing off. No, I meant the important the... note at the end. Uh... The very, very end. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Cersei just kind of watches as <laughs> this, that corner of the city just gets demolished. And Tom... What were your thoughts there, like, the first time you watched this? Well, I, wa I was able to actually watch this live, so I was like, what the heck? Um, the fact that this had happened, but I was like, this is Cersei. This is, has Cersei written all over it. Um, so I kind of half expected it, especially when thinking about how the fact that she asked about the wildfire um, mm -hmm. two, season two seasons, two episodes earlier. So it's kind of like, ooh nice <laughs> um but then it's like the fact that they kind of um back to back the explosion with tommen's suicide you're just like you kind of because people sometimes because i watched back after watching this episode people reacting to this episode and a lot of people didn't catch the fact that tommen jumped until they're like wait he jumped <laughs> it's just like because it's like the explosion uh and then kind of reeling with that happening and then just watching Tom jump, you're just like, what the hell did I just watch? But we find out that Cersei kept one person alive that that was a, a big bruise on her, her adult life, which was it's up to Anella. And she gets wine waterboarded um, before having to deal with uh, the mountain. And then we also get um, Cersei seeing Tom in the dead body. So. You had to feel a bit of satisfaction there. Mm hmm Like, especially because you're basically watching Cersei go insane. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't want to feel that compassion for her, but when it comes to Septa, you're like, yeah, I really mm -hmm. like watching this. I I really like watching her pour wine on her face. I really like watching her like confess, <laughs> confess. Like, like 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 it's that dirty little part in you that's like I don't want to like this, mm -hmm. but oh my gosh, I do. Yeah, because you're just like. Because in some weird, oh, sorry, in some weird way, you're just kind of like, this is justice, even though I don't like Cersei. Hey, I I actually prefer kind of, it's weird because I was in some way kind of prefer Cersei's character over Daenerys since most scenes, um, because it's just like, yes. Uh, like, especially with this one, because the ones later on with Daenerys are just like, really? Um, I you know, I have to agree with you there. I, I, I don't really care for either character very much. Mm -hmm. But if I have to pick one, I would definitely pick Daenerys. Mm -hmm. Or, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I, I, I would definitely pick Cersei. Mm -hmm. 
Um, even in the books, to me personally, Daenerys' character is kind of boring. Mm -hmm. And that's just me. It, it, no. I, I, and I'm not saying I'm right or wrong, and I understand why people who like her character quite a bit like her character quite a bit. I totally understand that. Mm -hmm. Just to me, she's a very trope character. She's very boring. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, um, Cersei, I can go in to get behind because you love to hate her. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you really love to hate her. Yeah. And, but when she has her comeuppance, then yeah. when she has the moment in the uh, ask questions room, I don't think we're allowed to say torture in America anymore. Um, Interrogation room. The interrogation room. Oh, ask questions room sounds even more pleasant. It, it's like you're like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, you also realize you're like, especially if you are team Cersei, like we are for uh, team win or die on Geek Town 1. Um, yeah, we, we, we both are on team Cersei. <laughs> team Wildfire. Um, Wildfire. But yeah, I think she's got she's. Wait, you chat one, check it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I don't like. A lot of people are trying to predict uh, when she, when this character leaves uh, this show, but Lena Headey's got acting chops, so she's staying until the very last episode. I don't care. That's not that's not a spoiler in the least. That's just a prediction that uh, she's, she's there until the very last episode. And she sees uh, Tom and Spotty, and they're trying to figure out how they're going to plan for, the, uh, for his funeral. And she's just like, just burn him. Um, and put him in where Zepta Baylor once stood. Jamie arrives back in King's Landing, and he sees that everything that was once peaceful is just racked up um, as we would say on BSG. The fry scenes. Yeah, the fry scenes. And Cersei was crowned Queen of the Seven Kingdoms officially. So although she was already queen, she gets to be queen again. So what did you think about that when you first thought? First I have to say it's a testament to the director that he didn't just have uh Jamie face palm, mm -hmm. you know, because like, like even everything about Jamie, even er, how much he loves Cersei, all this, like it's like Queen of the Seven Kingdoms. Yeah, like yeah. do the face palm and then the hand up. Like I'd be yeah. like, because it's because it's almost like. Where's Tommen? <laughs> For him too. It's like, where's yeah, my son? He, he comes back. He he finds out his kid's dead. His basically wife almost. Uh, and she's like, oh, well, well us too. Who gives a fuck about this one? <laughs> yeah, it, it. You know, it's it's it, it, it's really tragic. Like, like that was the thing I was trying to hit on before. Mm -hmm. Like you're really starting to see how crazy she's getting, mm -hmm. and I like yeah, I, I like that. I think that's one of the things that's done well mm -hmm. in the last couple of seasons is that you're finally seeing how, like, it, she's nowhere near as nuts as she is in the book. No, but she's getting there. I, I mean, she's she's in the same ballpark. Well, she's lost all of her children at this point, so that'd go make anybody go crazy. So, yeah. And, yeah, sometimes you get mad for power, but, yeah, she kind of, we kind of leave off King's Landing with this episode, in this season, with just, we get a feast with the phrase, and basically it's Jamie 
uh, and Braun talking about how uh, the the preference of women at this point, and then Walder Fresh is like, "Look, we won back River Run, woohoo!" Um, it's like oh, so boring. This one part th- is just like, yeah. I, I I think one of the high points of the whole. Jamie Bran or, or Jamie Braun buddy cop mm-hmm. storyline that's been going on for the past season. Yeah. That Jamie is getting a little more jaded and he's not. Mm-hmm. He, he he doesn't kiss butt quite as much. He he really doesn't care about the niceties. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I'm a very polite person. I'm a very, you know, I, 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 I speak well. I speak properly. Mm-hmm. Uh, I treat people in a proper manner, unless they give me a reason not to. Mm-hmm. You, you know, but uh, once in a while, you need to talk like a commoner Mm -hmm. and uh, I love that Jamie in this scene he's like oh hey what have you really done Mm -hmm. like he's not kissing the phrase asses and and you really it, it doesn't have anything to do with the fact that the Lannisters have more money than the phrase or anything like that. Like, there's a way a noble person should speak to a noble person. Mm-hmm. And he's just not even about that. He's yeah. just like, well, let me tell you how this really is. <laughs> yeah. Let me go ahead and give you just like a little, a little clue into what's going on really here. Like, uh, I, I, I'm not going to. Uh, my grandma would have said, "I'm not going to polish this turd." You know what I'm saying? Like, like I, I, I do think that's one of the uh, few good aspects of the entire Jamie Brown Dorn storyline. Yeah, that's been going on. Is that, is that Jamie has picked up this this ability to. Is. Not speak the way his father taught him to, like, like. Yeah, been able to kind of, yeah. You know, he honestly, like, if you think about it, and this just occurred to me, mm-hmm. like, he is kind of his father's son mm-hmm. because he can clench the fist when he needs to, and he can put out the helping hand when he needs to, but he does it in a very different manner. Mm-hmm. And I think part of that's being around common folk. Yeah, it goes through and understands what more or less uh, that uh, still a high lord, but a lesser powerful lord has to deal with on the day-to-day right. basis. Until the one thing I'd say is, is, is Brienne's not a lady, but Brienne is noble, and she mm-hmm. she speaks in noble manner. She's always going to act that way. She's always going to. Uh, no, no, no. I, I'm sorry. Nobody in River Run has ever done anything well. <laughs> yeah, like they can do some stuff, but it's just like, eh. Anyway. <laughs> just a misnomer with this story. Anyway. Sorry, but there's the servant girl that's brought up. There um, is that servant girl. I don't remember where that scene comes in. <laughs> and they're like riding around on their cart. What is that? <laughs> like the poor, the person that was uh, bringing them to Old Town. It's like, what do you have under the like cross? Um, and we see Old Town for the first time, which is pretty funny uh, that we get to uh, see a place so late in the show. Like for the first time, we get to see a. Yeah. And you got to think about Sam, like, you know, when he was, like, five, he totally got his dad that, like, number one dad bug for Father's Day. 
<laughs> and now he's like, oh my gosh, then. I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the yeah. Freak bastard. <laughs> Yeah, and pretty much we see Sam um, arrive at the Citadel, give the note that's saying that Maester Eamon has died and that they need a new, that Castle Black needs a new Maester. And the secretary has <laughs> no love for the fact that Sam has shown up. He's just like, okay. Um, and Gilly, or lady over there with the baby, you have to stay behind. Well, uh, you come with me. Um, it just secures the fact that they will be separated for like a couple hours, anyways. So she's just gonna stay there in the lobby, uh, <laughs> waiting for I, Sam to show back up. I see the point they were trying to make, but I thought it was kind of overdone. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I I just think it was kind of overdone. Yeah. Sam sees the library. Uh, yeah, I, this was like porn for me. John, will you ever get to have this many books? I'm working on it. <laughs> it's like, what, what is it? One one hundredth of what you have is you don't. <laughs> no, what I have is one one hundredth. Yeah, that, that, that's what I meant to say. Like, but yeah, I, I I remember this scene like the first time I saw it. I was like. Like, damn it, it, it uh it, it reminds me um so uh, the main library at Ohio State University which is mm-hmm. a, a, about a two hour drive from where I live I got oh it was just like like yeah it, 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 but then seeing this where it's just like all in one room you're like mm-hmm. oh. yeah this is my porn right here <laughs> So much books, so little time for Sam to read them all. Um, but yeah, Mel just being like, I burnt to read. And Dallas being like, if you're uh, And then John just being dopey in the corner. Um, there's not much to this scene other than the fact that John says that if she ever comes back to the North, he's going to have her killed. Um, you think he's going to hold to it? First, I think she'd probably come back to the north as an old lady um, and hide in disguise. Uh, and if anything, if she was to be killed off by him or have her killed, it's hard to say because it's it's really weird because sometimes he's like, I can't t- kill somebody because they killed somebody. Or... Um, like for treason, it's like I can't do that because it's treason or whatever. Like it's it's hard for him to figure it out. Like if she shows up, but right before the battle sequence, that's uh, of course the big one of the big battles that we're gonna have. He's gonna not gonna have time to go like bring me the executioner's block and chop off and all of that. Like we're not gonna have time for a whole drawn out thing that we would like to have like a lot of people would like to have for her death like she probably is gonna like I don't, I don't know but you have to you have to think about his his ethos and his morals mm-hmm. like at least me personally I would be more comfortable with killing An adult who burned a child at the stake mm-hmm. than I would with killing a child who stabbed me because he thought I did him wrong. Mm-hmm. And don't get me wrong, fuck all. But. <laughs> no, no, I get it. Like, it, it uh, I, I, I think I'd be a lot more comfortable with killing an adult who burned a child at the stake. I'd be like, oh, hey, yeah, I already killed a little kid, so game. Yeah. Let's do this. I... Hey, King in the North. 
I feel like though he's kind of conflicted about it because it's like because of her potentially both her killing off Shireen because there's that whole debate of if her killing off Shireen actually like meant for John to come back um, because it's the death to pay for life kind of situation but then also people like discredit it because it's like well she kind of because of Shireen the like all the snow started to melt it's like don't you all remember that in the Zord there's the thing of the false winter or whatever or it's just delayed like yeah but it kind of goes back to what we were talking about before like he didn't want to come back in fact he literally says to her Mm -hmm. in the last episode but she's like, ah, it's I not up to me. Bring me back. And she's like, oh, well, I just do it. The Lord of Light tells me to. You know, I'm pretty, you wouldn't know it from my mouth, but I am an actually pretty practicing religious person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it, uh, I, I, I wouldn't force something like that on somebody. No. And uh, no, I, 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 I think he'd be like, oh, hey, you're back in the north. Give me my sword. Okay, bye. Yeah. Uh, I killed a little kid. Bye. <laughs> it's, it's hard to say, but yeah, Liam kind of comes acting in this scene. My oh. gosh, is it so good. Um, Brilliant. Brilliant. This man, I'm surprised it didn't even give him like an honorable mention or an award for this. Yeah, he, he pulls it off. Because it, 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 he knows that he's in this social situation where he can't hmm. just unload. No. Even though he comes from a society and culture that that's like what you do. Mm-hmm. And he just wants to unload. Uh, I, I mean, I, I'm not saying like he wants to stab her right away or whatever, but he just wants to go off and yeah, at, at least get what he says, out. What, what what he has to say out of his mouth. Mm-hmm. And he's just he, 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 like the jaw claim. Yeah, the, the the fact that he didn't even get an honorable mention is. But they, who who got the freaking Oscar that year? And for what show? I can't remember. It was probably like <laughs> Big Brother. Or some something like. It's like a something stu- yeah, pathetic. Yeah. Same thing with like, if it wasn't pathetic, please, I apologize. Mm-hmm. Do whoever liked whatever <laughs> show that whatever person got the Oscar for, but uh supporting actor, yeah. Yeah, Maybe same. Got it. Same thing with Lena. Like Lena Headey's never been awarded a nomination for none of these like shows as a supporting actress. That and she's never won. Well, she has been awarded. I don't think she's ever gotten uh, an award for the fact of her work on this show. I think the only person to get one was Dinklage. Funny scene that happens between these two is just basically. I don't want the room. You get the room. I don't want it. Yes, you do. Blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, it's just like, oh my God. And then. It's awkward and it's funny, but it's well done, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's, a, it's again pl- planting those weird scenes between these two, which I've done videos on, um, where it's like, why is he acting so cute? towards Santa like giving the like obviously I don't have sibling but the fact that he just like gives her this long for all intents and purposes forehead kiss also five episodes ago talks about the fact that he likes the fact that her the dire wolf sigil is on top of her breasts but it's like I like it and it's like okay um this is it's either it's pegging the weird like love child thing that was originally in the book or something, but I don't know. It's weird. My personal take is it's just I I I like that you're representing your family. 
as opposed to like people who've taken you, people who've hurt mm -hmm. you, like you're representing your family. Mm -hmm. Is and especially it's kind of like foreshadowing to the whole little finger shit that goes on next season. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh. Okay. Well, you're in charge here. Yeah, but you live here. Uh. But you're in charge. Well, I don't want to sleep in the room that dad fucked that woman who hated me. Well, I don't want to sleep in the room that mom and dad used to fuck it. No, please. Go ahead. It's your bed. No, no, it's your bed. Go ahead. Yeah, it's like for them though, and it's just awkward. <laughs> uh, yeah. Sorry, if you want to keep that in there, do if you don't. No, I'll just like I'll I'll figure out what I'll do with it later. But yeah, <laughs> it's, it's the honest to God truth, though. It's like that's how I thought. That's how I thought about the whole scene. It's like it's not even the like respect thing. It's the like, no, I don't want to go near that bed. It's like then neither of you do. Just, then it's like they should have done a thing of like they shut on. It's like well, no one gets their room then. <laughs> Arya gets the room and she gets to hide her mask. No, it's like, here, we'll just, uh, we won't shove you and Daenerys in the same room. So here, she'll just get in that room when she's in. <laughs> it's like, here, you just, you get to sleep in there. Everybody else gets their own room. You stay there. This scene, this great, oh, wonderful. Elena, Elena is the only redeeming thing from this freaking scene, my God. Oh. Uh, and, She's, she's okay, like, I this is the scene I thought it was. Yes, Elena kicks ass. Mm -hmm. She's with the oh, talking about my girlfriend there. <laughs> you and Johnny both love Elena Tyrell. Like, come on. I've loved Elena Tyrell since I watched The Avengers with my dad when I was a little kid. <laughs> like the old Avengers from the 1960s. That's funny. So yeah. Lena Headey, yeah, I, I've loved Lena. Look at picture of Lena Headey when she was like Lena Headey or Elena Tyrell or a Dame Diana Rigg. Yeah, Lena Headey. I'm glad this is a podcast. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. I got um, like three hours of sleep last night. I'm sorry. No, no, it's okay. Um, yes, Lady Diana Rigg. Look, look at pictures of Lady Diana Rigg. Back in like the 1960s, and I used to watch the, the old Avengers TV show with my dad. Just yeah. to, like Google it, <laughs> Google it, but, but yeah, pretty much. All that is just like the last time a Tyrell came to Dorne, they were assassinated by the Red Scorpion, which I believe is in Fire and Blood. We haven't gone back to Fire and Blood in a while, but I think it's mentioned there in some way. Um, it does. It was during the Second Dornish War. Yeah. And pretty I'm, much... I, 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 I'm pretty sure. I'm, I'm almost positive. Correct me if I... Correct the, us in the chat if we're wrong, but... Yeah, and they're like... I, the, the Sand Snakes start to talk, and I was like, shut up! <laughs> and uh, then Varys shows up, and basically... Uh, Gets these two women to rally behind Daenerys. We were talking about people who uh, deserved uh, Emmys and didn't get them. It's this gorgeous woman right here mm -hmm. on your screen. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh! She could have gotten so uh, many. Like, like, she, granted, she had great dialogue written for her. Mm-hmm. But it's the delivery. Mm -hmm. It's the delivery. Uh huh. Oh, what about? Shut up. I don't care. Hey, it, it, it's. Oh, she it's so brilliant. It, it, it yeah. It. And, and for me, honestly, it was a disappointment that. I was really hoping between this and you know the 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 Elena being left and the Sand Snakes 
and Yara with Daenerys that there would be a new direction that yeah that, that, that at least there would be some equality or something like that and, and I felt like you know they set it up for that and then it just like all these characters just get killed off really fast dude. You know, <laughs> just it's like we bring them all together just to chop them all away yeah, yeah and don't get me wrong I mean this Okay, these these aren't my sand snakes. These are like, mm-hmm. no, that's not my Varus either, by the way. No, he's a lot more badass. Yeah, it's pretty much. That's my Danny. She's a spoiled brat. But and that's not your Dario, I'm assuming either. Well, there's a little blue missing. Yeah. Just a wee bit. Yeah, I, I I I I like Pouty Dario. I I I think the story is gonna go there. Mm-hmm. Booker show. I think the story's gonna go there. Danny's like, hey, we can shag, but I'm gonna marry somebody who like actually means something. And Dario's gonna be like, oh, I'm just poor boy. Nobody loves me. Like for queens. <laughs> <laughs> but for and, oh, and then that would oh, that would be great. Like you know, if if uh, you know, I, I mean, she has like ten thousand units. You know, there have to at least be some castrati there. So like a few of them could bust out. He's just a poor boy from a poor family. Spare him his life from this monstrous. Now there have to be a remake of that. Um, but uh, pretty much Daenerys. I'm sorry, I derail your channel so much every time. No, I no, no, it's fine. But pretty much, just quickly in this scene, Dan is just like, "Yeah, we're all gonna go, and you have to stay here. Um, you're not gonna be my boy toy across the narrow sea. You get to just be in charge until they decide uh, who they want to rule." Um, yeah, this I'm just like, oh god, the fact that she's like, yeah, you get to be in charge, and like the fact that you leaving last time for a few weeks caused utter destruction when Tyrion was left in charge. Do, what do you think's gonna happen when somebody who has no titles is left in charge of a city for forever? It's like utter destruction that's why pretty much I think he's coming like they'll either have to mention Dario in season 8 or he'll show up with the golden company like there's two sides to that coin there that and I think it also gives at least for me mm-hmm. granted I'm a middle aged man so at least for me it kind of gives a concept of how misguided Dario is about what's important in life. Because seriously, would I rather be married to somebody who's in charge of me? Or would I rather have an entire city that I can tax, skin those taxes, get what I want, make the laws, make things the way I think they need to be, and if I shave a little off the top, hey, cool. Like, how does he not get that? He's a man in love with the mother of dragons. Like, I would rather have a city of chaos over a mother of dragons any day. And that's the one thing that I'm just kind of like, with Daenerys' character, but is that Every single male character that she has met has basically fallen at her feet and be like, I love you. Uh, that there's no one who has given her pushback. Maybe it's dark, the OG but... Did. The OG did. There were plenty of times that uh, Caldrogo was just 
Well, like later on, like obviously he said that's where the whole yeah, the uh, stars thing shows up. But it's a threat to his baby's life, not her yeah. life. His yeah. baby's life. Yeah. No, but it's just the she odd over. This isn't some misogynistic statement or anything like that. No, no. I, I, I'm saying, yeah, she's got some serious plot arm. Yeah, she's just been like more or less. She has been guffawed over by a whole bunch of people. Like no one's outwardly rejected her in some aspect. But until that happened, he's like, "What's a metal chair matter?" Yeah, I've got a horse. Why do I need a chair? Yeah, but yeah, it's like the now I, from different aspects that. And if anybody watches our live streams and watches Cylon Johns and watches all the other shit that we're on, <laughs> probably knows how I think. Like, I'm like, yeah, oh, hey. Okay, yeah, we're not shagging anymore, but <laughs> I have the opportunity to make a shit ton of money. Cool. See ya. Bye. Bye. Want to have a goodbye shag? Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but yeah, this, this man. I'm. There's, there's, there's oh, your boat. There's your boat right over there. It's coming. Um, but uh, I don't know. The, these two, it's just it was nice while it lasted, and there's a, and I feel like there's a reason why they have Daria look so much like uh, the Dario's actor. I can never remember his name. Look so much like Kit Harrington, just like in a weird way. I'm like. Ed and James, man. It was just one of those things. He's angry, but... Are you familiar with this song? Not sure. It was just one of those things. Just one of those crazy flings. One of those bells that now and then rings. Maybe. It was just one of those things. Maybe. I'm not sure. It's it's a very good song about a short-term relationship. Yeah. Bad. It's like these two, mm. anyone. Just like, eh, whatever. And then Daenerys, I felt I broke up with him. New friend, I I, I just broke up with him. And he's like, ah, all right, <laughs> you had to do it. And then we get Tyrion is now hand of the queen. Not surprising in the least. Um, but it happens. This was a touching moment. Or, mm-hmm. it, it, uh, it, it mean, was coming. We we all root for Tyrion. I mean, mm-hmm. let's face it. Like even a cynical bastard like me roots for Tyrion. Like you gotta love him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and him finally getting his finally getting recognized. His trophy. Like 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 y- you 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 have to appreciate that. Mm-hmm. And I did. You know, I, I'm not. Uh, I'm the last person to call myself a Danny fan, but I did like this conversation mm-hmm. that they had. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like, I felt nothing when I broke up with him. And he's like, well, a lot of people are going to like you, and <laughs> you might ne- not necessarily like them back, but it's just the fact that that's what happens when you're a ruler. Sometimes you don't get to make the choices that you want. Um, I don't remember what show it is, but it's like, uh, oh, it's the remake. It's a not wildly historically accurate version of Mary Queen of Scots show, Rain, but it's, it's one of the quotes from the show is, happiness is one thing that queens can never have. And she wants happiness, but she can't. Um, happiness is something that most rulers never have. The thing that Daenerys is kind of struggling with now is just like, how am I supposed to do this? Like, I'm, I'm ready. I've taken some courses in how to do this by using one city or three cities as an example. But basically, Tyrion just tells her. Why why not? You have armies, you have ships, you have dragons. You've had 
everything that you can pretty much ever possibly want and you you still want to it's like almost like you still want to stay and she's like no I want to go but she's not like she's kind of not ready but she is ready it's like letting go of what's familiar is what I remember from this scene a lot was no, I, I I think Tyrion should bust out some of that advice from all those books that he read here. How to be a hand. You know, I, I don't get me wrong. I think this conversation is brilliant. But they established so much early on that he's this well-read person who's read all these great writers who are leaders who are philosophers and things like that and he just says oh well you got the power why don't you do it it's yeah. like like it, it's a great conversation but mm -hmm. i think it diminishes his character yeah you know, and that's why i think it makes it like kind of dopey in the next season when he's Mm -hmm. like so terrified because she burns everybody to death it's like dude you kind of told her to do it yeah well like Johnny has uh, said I can't remember on which podcast that we we I did with him about it but yeah we were when we were talking about Tyrion's character kind of moving forward it's like you've only done like 64 like yeah. why can't you remember it? which one it was <laughs> um, but basically after episode seven of season five Tyrion becomes a background character he becomes a b character even though he is the highest paid actor on the show he becomes a background character he's really viewed by like a lot of people because yeah he becomes just subservient to daenerys almost and it's just it's hard to watch a little bit uh him kind of go through that but he gets handed the queen pin um which she kind of just pulls out of her dress like right next to her her boom so it's like doesn't that hurt it's like or like wouldn't it be poking because there's like the, the pointy end in it but she pulled it from underneath the dress and then gave it to him because it was supposed to be the surprise thing of that scene well then he should have sniffed it you know Jamelly. Under boob sweat. <laughs> <laughs> this is hot smelling brain. Uh, but yeah, he, he gets the hand of the queen pen and it's just like, oh, happy Tyrion. Um, but he wants the hands on the queen, so he, he should have snared. He should have been like, oh. he does. <laughs> he, he does want Daenerys in some ways. He doesn't want Daenerys, but that would have been really funny. <laughs> people people think that he wants Daenerys some way, somehow. No, I, I, I don't think so either. Pretty much their last scene is just them sailing away, which is cool, but um, like uh, Brita, uh, Foya Hexa, who uh, Johnny has had on, her channel, on his channel before, has said about Game of Thrones especially is sometimes not all uh, seasons ended and started the way that it was supposed to end. It looked all promising and then the next season's finale just completely flipped it on its head like Daenerys sailing off to uh, Westeros and to King's Landing only to in the next uh, season finale have everything completely <laughs> upside down um yeah Oof. i'm not gonna get into that i'm not on that episode yeah well i i i did like how they ended this episode with mm -hmm. this like that yeah very, uh, in, cool. i'm an episodic washer that's why i torture you women every friday night <laughs> yeah be, be, because I I, I I I think episodic shows should be watched episodically. Like it, it it's enjoyable. Like mm -hmm. to me it's enjoyable. Like the the waiting, the wondering, the it is an enjoyable thing. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, you're, 
that week that you can talk to your friends. Mm-hmm. Which will be so fun. See what's going to happen or that 439 days. It's almost 600 days. Cause okay. I, cause I just picked last, a number out of Last it. week, it was, I think the end of March, beginning of April was 583. I think they said it in the media how long it's been since the new episode and the last episode. So it'll I, be I, I, about a year. Um, yeah, yeah, it's kind of torture. Of a year. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, it's just the crew going off to Westeros, but we'll talk about them again later. <laughs> what happens with them? Like, yeah, what happens with them a bit later? But Peter Baelish and Sansa having a really weird conversation about well, your brother. It looks like he's going to be named king, so you just got to be angry at him and start some fighting, uh, which doesn't really happen, kind of. Okay, if I told you my pet theory, and I'm sure I'm not the first person who's come up with this, but I have been avoiding all things Game of Thrones besides your channel Mm -hmm. for the past, like, six months because I don't want any season eight stuff. Mm-hmm. Establish this. My pet theory is from the minute that Sansa talked to Bran, let alone when Arya shows up, getting rid of Baelish was in the works. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they. And then Arya shows up and they're all like, oh, hey, yeah, we need to take the garbage out. Yeah, there was. There was a scene that they had in season seven that they cut out due to time restrictions for the show, like the allotted time slot that the show gets. I think it was episode five or four when Arya shows up that there's a scene where Sansa goes to Bran's room, I think, and like they talk about um, Baelish specifically. I think. Or you showed up before that. Yeah, I think it it was. No, she shows up in episode four. Yeah. But I think it was like episode five. I think it was either four or five that they have this conversation that's never seen the light of day because they cut it out. But there was that was supposedly what had happened. Just the the census of this dialogue is just that Peter Bayes is trying to just sow discourse and just be like. Uh, I've declared for your, your brother's gonna be declared king, but I declared for House Stark, and she's just like, yeah, whatever. You've said slimy <laughs> things like that before. I'm just gonna go back to my brother. You stay here, do whatever you want, you slimy, and uh, we'll see you later. Um, Agreed. Uh, and also, I, I do have to say, from an aesthetic standpoint, Sophie Turner's hair and makeup team Mm -hmm. this this scene is the best i've ever seen the cinematography this scene the way it's shot like all of this is just Mm -hmm. absolutely and there's so little dialogue here and and, Mm -hmm. uh, i I mean this this is the reason i never thought there was really any beef between Arya and sansa Mm -hmm. because yeah it's all just made up (laughs) <laughs> Baelish's mindset. He's like, uh, hey, creeper, no creeping. Creeper, no creeper. Like, yeah, because they tried to kiss her again. She's like, uh-uh, not fam, not today. So then Bran can finish the RLJ uh, vision that he sees. Um, and Mare's like, do you want to see it? And Bran's like, yeah, yeah. Um, with the bloody eyes of the, the weirwood tree. And... I know because you're a book reader, they had this, they've only had this scene to sort of talked about in terms of f- fever dreams, more or less, not necessarily no, it's, a flashback. It, 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 it's, you know, in the book, it's written so well the way you think in dreams. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's disambiguated. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you you have a moment and then you have a moment and then you have something that's like boom hey this is in my face and then you have like like the way you dream mm -hmm. uh, and i have to say george r, r. martin does it quite well mm -hmm. um you know uh, i yeah but you know here's your big it's the baby reveal mm -hmm. an awesome fight scene by the way yeah. Awesome fight scene. Have you ever seen the uh, lightsaber <laughs> version? Of it? Yeah, people on YouTube just they're so funny and Which they're so is great. Awesome. I gotta admit, it's both a Star Wars and a George R. R. Martin nerd. I love it. I, mm -hmm. I absolutely love it. I was just like, oh, this is badass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but. This scene, it obviously doesn't reveal all of the information because they obviously meet or like get it to where you can't even understand what she's saying on uh, subtitles uh, because they kind of just go like with a lot of this. Um, but like uh, what John's name is, sorry, I just hit my mic, what John's name is and who the father of her child is, even though they say uh, she says Robert would want to kill him um, and promise me and all of this stuff, but it's a sweet. Mom's doing dishes in the background. Uh, it's a sweet scene that's put between these two, and it's a scene that a lot of people have been waiting for. Um, the reveal of Liana and. Uh, the fact that her only scene is her death scene up until season seven, but it's... Oh, agreed. I, I've been in love with Leana since book one, chapter two. Like, when I read it 20 years ago. Because she's, like, such an intriguing and mysterious character. Yeah. Um, oh, another thing I have to say about, but particularly about this scene, the casting was brilliant. And the funny comment I have to make here is that Bran is never going to be able to have sex. Bash, so we get Leona's death scene, and this intro, like, poor Ned, young, young Ned, doesn't understand the gravity of the fact that his sister is dying. Um, but she, in her dying words, uh, promise me, Ned, before showing baby John Snow, and obviously we get the cutaway, um, to him as a young baby, <laughs> as like a newborn baby, but then obviously in, in present day, which I guess if they didn't show this, specific cut that a lot of people have been like, huh? What? <laughs> like if they had waited until like the end, and be like, right. what? Because um, you can kind of take that in a few different directions because people <laughs> like to talk about who's who's father and all of that, but yeah, the big reveal <laughs> that John being declared king in the north. <laughs> uh, and yeah, and my girl Lady Liana Mormont. Yes. She's a... Uh, yeah. If my son had been a daughter, I would want my son to have been Liana Mormont. And she's a lot more hard-ass than he is. A hell of a lot more hard-ass than he is. Yeah. Fair enough. But, yeah, John's declared... It takes up them a second, but they declare John King of the North and the White Wolf because he avenged the Red Wedding. Not entirely on his own, but okay, I can see how you get there. Um, now, you and I have talked about this before. Even Davos is like, oh no, something big is about to happen now. Um, yeah, but I'm talking about when, when Harrington's like, oh, no, don't do yeah. this, guys. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, he's like, going to do it soon, like when they declare. Do I have the last person you did this to? I've already died once. 
Yeah, it's like, ah, but yeah, they declared John King in the North and the White Wolf. And why they kind of do this is because if John was to actually carry banners um, as a bastard, they'd yeah. be inversed. So he would be a, a white wolf on a gray yeah, yeah. background. Inverse, not sinister. Sinister would be... Yeah, it's, it's inverse. So it's less a, cream, a cream wolf on a uh, white background, or a right. gray background. Whereas yeah. sinister is, is you take and flip what's on the right and what's on the left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would be, it was, it's inverse. His, his banner would have been inverse. Um, but we know as of season seven, it's not even that sigil technically entirely. Um, so, and yeah, Leona gives that rousing speech of, well, you better declare him king, you nins, and then they do it anyway. Um, but yeah, Manderly, Glover, like yeah we'll do it oh i i i love the moment it's not just because it's like a wee little kid mm -hmm. like it's it's because it's like hey it's because bear island is the smallest territory in the north mm -hmm. and I, I mean yeah there is that aspect that it's it's a wee little child but like Bear Island's smallest territory in the north, with fewest representatives, with fewest people, with fewest fighters. And she's the one who stands up and says, This is my king. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it, 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 she could have been an adult, and it, it still would be like, might not have been quite as powerful, but it would still be. Oh no! Yeah, it would it would have still some weight to it, but because it's a child and it's a small girl, like that's just like a whoa uh, kind of situation. Um, small girl who I bet could beat the tar out of a third of the people in this room. Oh, she puts all these grown men to shame. She's just like, <laughs> your no, son meant, was quicker like, than you did nothing. <laughs> yeah, because she's like, he, your uh, your son was killed, uh, but and you did nothing. And then with another person, you didn't answer the bannerman, and you did yeah. nothing. And then it's like, but you did nothing. But me, the small little girl who had gave gave him sixty two men, I did something. And she's like, the way that she beats them down is just. Oh. Would you say top three monologues in the series? Yeah. Most definitely. And I feel, especially, like, um, when they, they'll they probably have a scene like this in season eight, she's most definitely going to read Daenerys and be like, yeah, shut up. Or something. So <laughs> like, uh, Miss Sandes goes like, this is Daenerys, queen of the Andals and the First Men, blah, 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 blah. And she'd be like, she should be like, yeah, no, that's my king over there. Or she'll, she'll flip entirely and she'll be like, you're an idiot to John. And then be like, this is the person that I follow now. It's like, Well, I don't know. By, by the next season, she'll be like, what, 12? She's, she is 10 at the, age, at the end of this season because that's yeah, so she'll, be, she'll be 12. She'll be around 11, and, 12, yeah. You know, she could even be like, why didn't you keep your dick in your pants? I should have voted for your sister. I made a mistake voting for you. I was like, you had so much promise, but then a girl showed up and everything went awry. John, I'll have you take it away because oh. all that I have to say about this is just, it's just awesome. And Arya should have had at least one more tip from hot pie about cooking this pie, but that's for another day. Arya was smart enough that she didn't get invited into that house. She's given bread and salt, but you know what? She's not a guest, and she's not giving it to a guest. She did. She killed those phrase. Yes, but she didn't break the guest right. Also, oh, just, hey, I'm feeding you your grandkids. 
and now I'm going to kill you. It's just, it's brilliantly done. It, it the, the dialogue, uh, I, 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 you know, you have the satisfactory moments in television, you have the like shock moments and things like that. They're made for you to enjoy. Like, I, I, I mean, sit there, go on YouTube, watch reaction videos during this scene. And people are like, <sighs> and, and I was too. I was like, but, but at the same time, you're like, oh my gosh, I wanted this to happen. Uh, and yeah, it's just, it's perfect. It's brilliant. I thought it was brilliantly done. I thought it was brilliantly shy. And even though it wasn't the very last scene, of the season i thought it was a damn great way to end Arya's story arc for the season yeah especially when she the the emotionless look she has when she slits his throat like it, it to me really speaks that yes she has become a faceless person and i don't think that makes her a sociopath or psychopath I think it just means that she has a job now and that's killing people. And she's, I, I, I imagine once she gets her list done, she's going to go back to work. Yeah. Like, that's my theory. She's going to go back to work. She's going to be like, Hey, I took my leave. I took my leave. You know, the, the, that piece of paper on the wall says that I get like, you know, X time of paid leave. Now I'm going to come back and I'm going to do my work, but I had these things to get out of the way first. Yeah. Something like that. It'll, she'll have to go back to the House of Black and White at some point. But, John, what do you rate this episode? And what are your final thoughts? Okay, the low points are very low to me. But they're very few. And the high points are very high to me. So I am going to give this, I'm going to give this nine out of 10 thumbnails. Nine and a half. Let's rally for the only king to make a claim some way, somehow left in this show. It's a long one, but anyway, can the people find you and what you have coming up next? Music makes the people come together. Um, not sure when this podcast is going to be dropped, but either tonight or last night or sometime recently. At some, it, it'll be at some point this week. That this some, will be. some point in the the next like five days, four days. Five material <laughs> playing. Yeah. Uh, the new songs for Ice and Fire is going to happen. I'm going to be talking to Sasa K about Ron Giovanni which I'm very excited about. We're talking about him and scores and um, the music of the Game of Thrones, which I am so stoked about. Also, Wednesday nights, if you're into American Gods, the show, or the books, uh, I talk to Amy True every uh, Wednesday afternoon at 4.30 on my channel. And it's pretty cool. The first half, we try and keep as spoiler-free as possible for non-book readers, but I'll be honest, we're pretty bad at it. And then also, I have a very cool new project that is going to be starting tomorrow, happening on my channel which is what my channel is all about, which is music. And uh, yeah, the first bit of that's coming out tomorrow. So we'll, we'll see where it goes. So this week, pretty much for me, it's just all the remaining episodes of GOT is just coming out. Um, then on Monday, I will be on with Johnny around 2 o'clock for his uh, Nooners of Thrones series. And then Monday night, I'll be talking about the same episode with Johnny again and uh, Justin Thomas and Axel Foley on Justin's channel um, around 8 o'clock. 
I think, at 8 Eastern, I'm pretty sure. Um, talking about the same episode. And then Wednesday is always on my channel. We'll be talking about all the episodes. Next Wednesday, aka tomorrow, we talked about 7-6 uh, Beyond the Wall. With that, we will see you all in the next one. Bye. <laughs> I'll stop it for now. <laughs>